Down to Florida We welcome you to the Sunshine State They're kicking back and soaking up the rays Every day in Florida I'm in Florida The sun is setting over Tampa Bay Like a Caribbean holiday Every day in Florida It is so nice to be in Florida Because, you know, where I live in New York, it's freezing And it's always nice when you're on vacation When the weather's good But it's more important that where you live, the weather is bad It's like, oh, they've got horrible weather at home. Good. I hope they all die. <laughs> Florida's amazing. It's interesting how much more respect Florida gets in December. Right? During the year, everyone's like, crazy Florida, Florida. And then at the beginning of December, the whole country's like, hey, Florida, how you doing? We always liked you. Can I come by and bring every relative I've ever met? Is that okay? Because Florida is beautiful and warm and filled with crazy. There is so much crazy. And the, and the women in Florida, unbelievable. You know what? The women, I have seen the most beautiful, sexy women in their late 80s. <laughs> It's confusing. Is, is that someone's grandma? Or a porn star? Or both? But it has been amazing here. I think it's, we've, I've done shows in all different cities. I think it's interesting how every city in Florida has their own personality. You know, like Miami's like, we're the sexy ones, we're Miami. And Orlando's like, we're for families. And Fort Myers is like, I couldn't hear the question. <laughs> What was the question? And Pensacola's like, wait, we're in Florida? <laughs> I, uh, I don't know, I've been here like a week and a half and uh, I've been ha relaxing a lot. And I don't know if you've ever been on vacation and you have to do something for work. And your heart's really not into it. <laughs> uh, there's an arena filled with people. So you just decide to roll through it. I've had... On Christmas, my, you know what my family did this year? On, on Christmas Day, we spent all Christmas Day in uh, Disney World, like Jesus would have wanted. <laughs> and, uh, no, we, we spent the whole day in the Magic Kingdom, and wow, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was a bad idea. <laughs> And I know people love Disney, and I want you to hear this. You're wrong. <laughs> it's, it's wrong. But you know what? I don't even remember. I've been, I keep learning that over and over again. I've been to Disney. I regret it. I go again. Like, Disney is like my jalapenos. I always think, I can handle this. And then a couple hours later, I wish I was dead. The happiest place on earth, right? That's what Disney is. It's the happiest place. I don't know. Is it the happiest? I always feel like, you know, you could get some, like, Syrian refugees in here, and they'd be like, you know what? This feels a little crowded. <laughs> is that too? That's too inappropriate. <laughs> you know who... 
You know who I feel sorry for at Disney are the grandparents. It, it, looks, like, it looks like elder abuse. What did these senior citizens do to their adult children to have to go to the Magic Kingdom? Mom, Dad, we're going to Disney. I can't walk. We're going to put you in scooters. I can't go on any rides. Now you'll wait in line with us and watch us. I'm on a very strict diet. You'll eat fried food and be constipated for the rest of your days. I'm sorry I wasn't there for your childhood. It's too late for that. And if you complain, we're going to Universal. <laughs> I hope you're having a good holidays. It's still going on. It's crazy. It, the holidays, it, it all just started as one guy's birthday. It was just one guy's birthday and it turned into a whole season. Kind of makes you wonder if like when Jesus was alive, if he was one of those friends that was like, hey, I just want to give you a heads up, my birthday's coming up, so. I mean, you don't have to do anything, you know. But if you want to chop down a tree and put it in your living room, that'll be cool, yeah. You could recreate my birth scene with dolls if you wanted. No. What if you got friends and you just sang songs door to door? That would be all right. I don't want you to overdo it. Yeah. Definitely celebrate the night before my birthday. You know, it's like, it's the night before his birthday. Why don't we go for 12 days? Let's go for 12 days and then just end the year. I just want people in January to be like, I'm still recovering from Jesus' birthday. That was insane. Jesus' birthday celebration makes all other birthday celebrations pale in comparison. I remember when my daughter turned six, my wife threw this amazing party for her. And after the party, my daughter was like, that was the best birthday ever. And I had to tell her, I was like, oh, sweetie, that was nothing. <laughs> Compared to Jesus's, I mean, your birthday was lame. <laughs> and she was upset, but it was a teachable moment. Some people are sad around the holidays. That's got to be hard for Jesus, right? I hate Christmas. Jesus is like, oh, that, that's my birthday. Then I hate your birthday. Oh, well, then you're going to hell. <laughs> I thought you forgave everyone. It's my birthday. <laughs> and you ruined it. By the way, that's how Jesus sounds. A lot of people don't know that. It's a very gentle tone. My brother Mike was born on December 25th, and he is nothing like Jesus. <laughs> nothing. And growing up, he would complain. He felt ripped off because he had to share his birthday with God's son. <laughs> we all share a birthday with a celebrity. Like, I have the same birthday as Ringo Starr, but, you know, that doesn't mean anything. You know? Doesn't mean I'm a good drummer doesn't even mean he's a good drummer. <laughs> Just means we have the same birthday and married women out of our league. <laughs> I love when he's self-effacing. <laughs> it's crazy. This time last month, I, uh, I was in Moscow. Can you believe that? I was in Moscow. That's right, I did a show in Idaho. And... <laughs> I, no, I was in Moscow, Russia. I did a show, but I also wanted to find out who's going to win the next presidential election. Uh, and I would ask. I was like, who's going to win? They're like, it's a secret. I'm like, can you give me a hint? No, you ruined the surprise. You'll find out like everyone else. Russia was fascinating. Such cultural differences. Like, the Russians, they never smile unless it's something really, really that makes them happy. And I asked them, I'm like, why don't Russians smile? And they're like, because we're miserable. I was like, that's interesting. I should do that. But I went to Red Square, which was fascinating. There was the, the Kremlin, and there was St. Basil's Cathedral, that beautiful building with the towers that look like soft serve ice cream. 
And you know how in Times Square, how there, there are people dressed like Elmo and Dora? Well, in Red Square, I'm not making this up, people are dressed like Russian historical figures. So people are walking around like there's someone dressed like Lenin and there's someone dressed like Gorbachev. And then I saw someone dressed like Stalin. I was like, wow, that's weird. Didn't he do a couple bad things? And, and I was like, that's something you'd never see in Germany, you know? You know, you'd never see someone dressed like Merkel. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I was, it was someone who was dressed like Stalin and people were paying to get their picture taken. And a lot of them were tourists from Russia. And they were like, I want my picture with the mass murderer. And, it, <laughs> and I was asking some and I, Russians about this. And they, they explained that they know Stalin was a monster, but Stalin was also a strong Russian leader. That's, that's important, a strong Russian leader. And you see it throughout their history. Like the most famous czar, Peter the Great. He was like, he's responsible for the Russian Empire and started their navy. But he also killed his own son. And I was like, he's still great? And, and the Russians are like, eh, parenting is difficult. <laughs> really? Yeah. And it's common knowledge that he tortured and killed his own son. They're like, eh, kids can be annoying. <laughs> and maybe Peter is considered great compared to the first Russian czar, who was Ivan the Terrible, who sounds like a professional wrestler. <laughs> that was his name, Ivan. Like, did he know that's what people called him? Was he like, hey, do, do I have a nickname? What do people call me? Do they? Oh, you have a nickname. Do they call me Ivan the Great? No, they call you Ivan the Terrible. Do they mean that in like a positive way? <laughs> like Ivan the Terribly Handsome, is that it? No, they, they call you... What if he was in denial about it? He's like, well, what did I ever do? What? Well, you also killed your son. Yeah, that, that's a big Russian thing. Uh, but Ivan, you also, the, the, the architects of St. Basil's Cathedral, you blinded them. That was a misunderstanding. I asked them, could you ever recreate something as beautiful as that? And they said yes, but I thought I heard them say, poke my eyes out. <laughs> so it was a misunderstanding. All right, thank you so much for coming out. Hi. I'm Jim Gaffigan, and I wanted to just thank you for watching that video. It just makes me giddy. I mean, not giddy, but makes me happy. And frankly, I don't have much more time on this planet. And I was, I guess if there's anything else I'd want, it would be if you would subscribe, but you don't have to do it. I know you're busy, you know, you're cool. You've got other videos to watch, but if you hit subscribe, I don't know, maybe I'll have the willpower to pull it out. That sounded dirty. <laughs>